Stay away from the giant mushrooms. Seriously, don't get too close to those. Hey everyone, Hedgedog here. I'm sorry about my voice. I've got a little bit of a cold, but I wanted to get this video out on time. All right, here we go. So you've probably already heard about this little game called Astroneer by now. It's a wonderful indie title. It's been in early access, officially referred to as Alpha, since December of 2016. And a cool two and a little bit years later, it's finally leaving early access with a 1.0 release. So what is Astroneer? It's a cross between survival and sandbox. You find yourself basically stranded on an unknown planet with nothing but a terrain shaping tool, which is very cool, you can shape anything on the terrain, and a pocket 3D printer at your disposal. The terrain tool will allow you to extract resources from the ground by making large holes, basically, that you can fill up later. And the 3D printer will craft modules to help you survive and expand your arsenal of available materials. The Pocket 3D printer can craft a medium printer, which can craft a large printer, and every step requires more advanced material, but with greater rewards as well. New materials can be discovered by means of manufacturing, and new modules are discovered through research of special items found all over the place. So this is all pretty standard stuff, and what makes Astroneer special, you ask? Well, first of all, the aesthetics are gorgeous. The game is clean and colorful, with mostly round edges all over. The game has almost no menus, with the player's backpack acting as the main storage, and it's even clickable without zooming in on it. Most item interactions are with just a click or a long key press. The menus mostly appear when selecting what certain modules do, like what do you want to print or research now, and will only appear when you're fairly close to the modules you're interacting with, so they make sense. At the same time, everything around you is still moving, still clickable, so you don't get completely swallowed up in the menu like you do in many other games. In terms of survival, it's pretty simple. Stay tethered, stay away from the giant mushrooms. Seriously, don't get too close to those. Uh, also, stay away from a few other things, but no spoilers. Tethering will maintain a constant supply of oxygen and power. Oxygen is obviously a great way to keep from suffocating, which is probably the most common cause of death in this game. There's no need to worry about food or shelter, unless a windstorm picks up, in which case you need to get underground or inside your base, or you'd risk getting pummeled to death with rocks. Yeah, lots of big flying rocks that will definitely kill you. The game is very laid back and the survival mechanics are very simple and it's actually pretty easy to survive. So you can just take your time and slowly locate more resources further and further away from your home base, dive deep into caves, locate research materials to unlock new technologies, and then further expand your base. One of the best parts is the rovers. You can build rovers to quickly cover significant stretches and even link a few rovers together to create a makeshift train and even set up a new base wherever you want. These rovers come again in several sizes like you'd notice most things do in this game. When you've unlocked pretty much everything, you can even craft a spaceship and start a new base on a new, possibly more hostile planet. There's a whole solar system to explore and every planet is different. On a final note, the game has been created from the ground up as a co-op experience with up to four astroneers working together at the same time. So grab your friends for the ride. And that's pretty much all you need to know right now. Astroneer will be leaving early access on February 6th, which is exactly one week from today. As such, I won't have time for a proper 1.0 review until the week after. Sorry about that. I might be able to live stream around the time that I'm supposed to release a video. I'm not sure my schedule will permit this, but I'll give it my best. Anyway, I'm super excited to finally see this game reach its full release. It's supposed to get significant updates with this full release, um, bigger co-op, more vehicles maybe, more things to craft. I don't know. I'm not sure exactly what's coming. I haven't read too much about this because I want to be surprised. I've been following this game for a long time and it's evolved significantly over this time. It's a truly wonderful game. Alright, that's it for this week. Catch you in the next one.